Hey everyone, welcome back to the Winner's Circle. I'm Derek. And I'm Cody. And this is uh, going to be one of three headline episodes we released this week. A um, little bit more somber. This is actually going to be coming out. You're seeing this the day after Thanksgiving. So not the best time to cover this, but if you don't want to ruin your day, you don't want to get your blood pumping, maybe hold this video off until the weekend. But we are going to have uh, this video today. We'll have uh, tomorrow will be the Ahmad Arbery uh, verdict, which just came out as we're getting ready to record this. And then the following day, it'll be the um, parade in Wisconsin, the Christmas parade in Wisconsin. So these these topics, they kind of deserve their own video. And so instead of doing them together collectively, we really wanted to take our time with them and break them down individually. So if you want to watch one particular topic, you can. If you don't, you can just skip on to the next video. We won't be offended. So for this week's episode, we're covering Kyle Rittenhouse and the verdict that is now uh, a very polarizing topic in our in our society and everyone is weighing in on it. And, and I'll speak for myself. I'd almost rather not talk about it because it's like a lose-lose. But as Cody was saying before we started recording, and I agree, we have to. We want to, you know, if we're going to cover the good things, we got to cover the the um the more tough topics to cover as well. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh you said it best. It's a lose-lose. There's no there's no winner in in either of these. I know, you know, not to skip ahead too much, but Rittenhouse was found not guilty on all the charges and there's really no yeah. winner in this scenario. This is a 17-year-old whose life will never be the same. He's never going to have that like normal childhood anymore. He's not going to have that normal experience to go to college. His life is forever changed and there's lives that were lost who there were people that were affected by that whose lives now will also not be the same it's a lose lose these kind of these these headlines are ones that unfortunately we see a lot um and you know you would think that the way that the media kind of portrays everything there's a winner and a loser and realistically there's no winner here there's no winner here at all so we'll dive right into it no which is a little ironic because we're called the winner's circle, right? But, you know, yeah. it's one of those things where yeah. there really is no winner here. And, and it's and, and it's a great way of saying it. And I think it's important. And we're going to, you said we're going to skip ahead, but we can kind of dive right into yeah. it. We're not going to sit here for 15, 20 minutes and recap the trial right. because it really is something that if you want to know all the details, you have to watch the trial. Mm -hmm. And I, for one, did not watch every day. Um, Cody, I don't think you did no. either, right? Saw the highlights. There were things I went back and watched, mm -hmm, right. moments that were kind of the deciding factors in the case. So I didn't watch it every single day. But from what I did watch, and I'm no lawyer, um, just to get right into it, I do think it was the right verdict. Yeah, I do think based on the law in Wisconsin, it was the, the right verdict. But I want to I want to break it down a little differently today. Because I think whenever we cover these topics, it's not only about, you know, looking at them in a vacuum. It's what can we learn from them? Because I, I really do hope for my kid's sake, the world starts to get better because it's pretty screwed up right yeah, now. Yeah, I agree. And so what I take away from this is, is something that I think I'm hoping that both sides of the aisle will find some common ground in. Because I do think that's what we really need to do. People get so caught up in what they believe, they can't see the other side. Mm -hmm. So- the way I want to approach this is is how I truly feel. It's not just trying to play mediator. And the theme is opportunists. And that'll make sense as we go. Is there anything you want to say, Cody, before we dive into that? I mean, there's a lot to cover here. We're going to skip around a little bit. Yeah. You know, anything you want to say before we we break that break that whole thing down? No, no, let's get right into it. Okay. So we're going to look at it from both sides. And Cody and I have talked a little bit before this, but we may not even agree on certain things, but Ultimately, we want to start a dialogue with us, between us, and also with you guys. Mm -hmm. So I said the theme is opportunists, and I really want to talk about what that means. First and foremost, I said I be, I agree with the the verdict that was that was handed down with Kyle Rittenhouse. Doesn't mean I like Kyle Rittenhouse. It just means that based on the way the law is written in Wisconsin, it does fit. Now, perception is big here because there are people who met a lot of people who look at the same video that I've watched. And see it differently. See as someone who went down there to kill people and who was an active shooter. And these individuals who tried to stop him were killed while trying to stop him. That's okay. I'm not going to try to change your mind. You're entitled to your opinion. That's why this country is great. Everyone can be entitled to their opinion. So back to opportunists. Let's talk about Kyle Rittenhouse first. Okay. Let me just start by saying I'm not a fan of Kyle Rittenhouse. 
Um, he's only a 17 year old kid, but he, he, at the end of the day, he's being viewed by millions of people and I'm going to judge him just like everybody else. And personally, I'm not a fan of Kyle Rittenhouse, even though I agree with the, the verdict. Why am I not a fan of him? Well, back to what I was saying about opportunists. Do I think Kyle Rittenhouse went down to these protests and these riots, let's call them what they are. Yeah. There were people there that were rioting. Yeah. Okay? There's video and and anybody that it's to support- has an opinion, just go watch the videos. The, the place Kenosha was was burning. There was a lot of to stuff. To the ground, going literally. On. There was a lot of stuff yeah. going on. There's video evidence of it all over the place. So it wasn't there there was a point that it was peaceful protests, and then there's a point that it was rioting. And we're talking about what was ensuing during the riots. Right. So he he decides to go down there, and according to him. He went down there to defend property. And I do think there's some truth to that. But I also think there's truth to the idea that Kyle Rittenhouse liked guns. He he wanted to he wanted to get in the mix. I've seen the TikToks. I've seen some of his tweets. I've seen some of the things, the people that he was hanging out with, the pictures he was taking. There's definitely a side to it where I feel personally like he went down there with the intention on, I'm going to go down there and protect this property because this is wrong. And if someone tries to stop across me or someone tries to get by me, I'm going to bury them. Literally. That's why I'm bringing, that's why you bring a gun, right? You're not bringing an AR-15 solely for the purpose of this is my defense weapon. I think there's, I think there's something more there. This is just my opinion. Well, I'm let, me, let me play Cody. devil's advocate a little bit and say, Please. do you think that maybe he was going down there to, because he was genuinely he's like, I want to help, but I know because of videos that he had seen previously, how people that were, I guess, going to hold and protect businesses, how they were treated and how hostile it could get. And so maybe initially he was like, okay, I'm bringing the AR to go down there to protect myself because I don't know how this is going to go. It could go a number of different ways. It could be fine, or I could find myself in a dangerous encounter. Do you think that maybe that could be in his head and not just like, oh, I'm carrying this AR to just go and shoot people? I I, I definitely think that's possible and probably likely. I don't think he, I do not think he went down there with the intention, like I'm going there to shoot people. Right. But here's the thing. He can see on the news that it's very violent down there. Mm-hmm. They're rioting, there's fires, there's fighting. You bringing the AR-15 is not going to de-escalate the situation. 100%. It's not going to. And he knows that. He's going down there to say, I see what you're doing. This is what I'm carrying. What's going to happen? Mm-hmm. I got the gun. You got the Molotov cocktail. Who's going to win? So do I think he went down there to kill people? I don't. That's what I, I don't mm-hmm. think he went down there with the intention on killing people. But I think in the back of his head, he knew it was a possibility. Right. And I think he went down there. To, you know, check out the property, protect it, because he didn't like what these people were doing. He didn't agree with these protesters, these rioters. So he was trying to stop that or prevent them from doing what they were doing. But uh, you bring a you bring a gun there, you have to you have to be trained and mentally prepared to use it if you need to. And he definitely wasn't trained, but I think he went went into it knowing like I could have to do it. And if I do, then I do. Yeah. So, I don't think he was concerned about it. Yeah. And what I will say to that is that I, what I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, is what you're saying is that he may be trained with the gun, i.e. like he's gone and shot the gun before. He knows how to use the gun. He knows how to change it. He knows how to, he knows how the gun works. Obviously he's, he's right. well trained in the gun, but it's the hostile situations. He's not well right. trained in how to de-escalate, how to deal with this, how how to handle a situation if uh, an altercation arises. If so, if he finds himself in that situation, how does he determine? Oh, life or death? He's seventeen years old. He couldn't possibly be trained in that with an AR because how would he have been in those situations? He's not even eighteen to, to sign up for the military. Like he is not trained in these situations. So no. he's showing up with an AR that he may be trained in using. But he's not trained in that hostile environment. And I don't to, to to a point, I don't think a lot of people are because this is a new, you know, we had seen riots in in our past, right? Not us individually, but you know, in history. And I don't think, you know, your average law abiding citizen is ready and prepared to handle that hostile situation. No. I mean, I'll even go as far as saying as I carried an AR-15 while a police officer. That's not the gun of choice when you have a large group of people. Because that bullet will go through the person you're aiming at and then the three people behind them. Yeah. So that's not what you would choose. But 
I, I don't think he was well trained in it. And to just to touch on the gun really quickly, because again, we're not breaking down the case. I know there'll be a lot of comments. So I'm trying to answer those questions. You know, people are going to say, but he brought the gun over state lines. That is completely fa- yeah. a fallacy. That's not what happened. So if you're going to go there, it's the wrong argument to make. The gun was already in Kenosha. Mm-hmm. It was bought by his friend. He had a residence in Kenosha with his father that he stayed at. So that's a nothing burger. Mm-hmm. Now, if you want to get into the fact that he shouldn't have been there because there was a curfew, that argument could be made for both sides. So we won't go there either. So we're yeah. trying to find the differences, but also the commonalities between the two. So there was something that some... I wanted you to touch on because I was I was confused about it. Yep. And I thought that you would have like a better kind of understanding. And it was the gun charge that was thrown out because it wasn't a short barreled rifle. And right. so when I first heard that, I was like, well, what does that even mean? And then I, I know the, you know, the the barrel of it doesn't match up, but I don't I didn't really fully understand it. And I, I thought it would be good for you to touch on it because I'm sure that's something that you yeah. understand more than. Well, than and I'm like someone me. who owns a lot of guns, too. Right. I don't have a short barreled rifle. Basically, a short barreled rifle is this, is. um designated in anything less than 26 inches in overall length, this is defined by the ATF, or a barrel less than 16 inches. If you have something like that and it has a fixed stock on it, not like a um, a brace, um, then it is considered a short-barreled rifle and you need a special um, tax stamp from the ATF in order to have that gun. The reason they do that is they want to know everyone who has a short-barreled rifle. Some could make arguments as to why the government wants to know that. We won't again, we won't go there. Mm-hmm. But the the purpose that they tell you is because a short belled rifle basically could be an AR-15 with a shortened barrel, but it can be stored in your backpack. And we can know what can happen with something like that with all the mass shootings that we've had. So they usually don't want that. I, I the rifle that Kyle Rittenhouse was carrying was definitely over a was over a 16 inch barrel yeah. and over 26 inches in length. Yeah. Um so again, just to summarize, we're talking about a lot here. There's a lot to cover. We cannot like, we cannot agree with what Kyle Rittenhouse did and still think that based on what we saw in the video, the verdict was right. Mm-hmm. And to go, to get to that point, we, my understanding, and you know, Cody and I have spoken about this with Rittenhouse. Again, he has the AR-15 on him. There's multiple videos mm-hmm. of Rosenbaum instigating, looking for a fight. Mm-hmm. Saying things like, shoot me, I won't even say the words he was saying, uh, instigating this. And according to Rittenhouse and some of the other witnesses, Rosenbaum charged him. And at that point, he felt like his, his in, in Wisconsin, you have to be in fear of bodily harm or death, mm-hmm. serious bodily harm or death. And according to R- Rittenhouse, and again, this is where we can mm-hmm. disagree with you guys out there. For, you know, mm-hmm. we can go back and forth. Rittenhouse was in fear of his life and shot Rosenbaum. So that one's done, right? You have that incident. Now we have the video that everybody's seen Mm -hmm. where Rittenhouse is running down the road and there are multiple individuals. I would even say a group of individuals chasing after him. Here's where it gets interesting because again, it's in the eyes of the beholder. It's in the person perceiving this. If you're on Rittenhouse's side, this is Rittenhouse fleeing the area, trying to avoid further conflict. And this group of rioters is chasing him down attempting to assault or kill him. That's their side of it. Mm-hmm. If you're on the other side, this is a group of individuals who just witnessed a shooting and are perceiving Rittenhouse as an active shooter and are attempting to catch him, apprehend him, and stop him from killing anybody else. Mm-hmm. Anything on that, Code? Um, Not really. I, I think that the whole... I think that the first one is what sparks everything else. The Rosenbaum shooting. When Rittenhouse shoots Rosenbaum, that's where everything is sparked. And I think when I was watching everything, I felt that the best way, and I'm not a lawyer by any means, but I thought the best way to describe and and probably prosecute Rittenhouse would have been on the first shooting. Because after the first shooting, this video, the video was like, how do you watch that video and not realize that this kid was 100% in fear for his life. The first video, you see it. It's out there. The first video is out there of Rosenbaum. You see Kyle Kyle flee, and then you see Rosenbaum take off after him. You see Rittenhouse turn. No, Rosenbaum did take off. Rosenbaum, he's already already dead at that point. No, no, no. Initially, the video that's in like the parking lot where Rosenbaum was shot. Correct. Yep. I'm sorry. You know, Rittenhouse kind of turns. He sees Rosenbaum kind of coming. Then as he's running away, he turns again, and Rosenbaum is closer. Rosenbaum lunges at him. That's when the first shot happens. That's when he shoots Rosenbaum multiple times. Rosenbaum goes down. 
that I felt was where, when I was watching this, I was like, this, this is the only part of this case that I feel the prosecution can maybe say it wasn't, um, wasn't self-defense. It wasn't self-defense. Right. And, and once I agree that, with that was gone, I agree with that. once that was out and they were trying to make it all seem like it was the same, I was like, there's no way they they're grabbing at straws here because the second video that you're talking about that we're getting into now is where the skateboard is, is swung at the back of his head. Apparently there was rocks that were thrown that hit him in the back of the head. I can really the decipher pulls that a gun from out. the video. And then the final one was the guy pulling the gun out. But, but before the yeah. guy charges him, pulls the gun out and is pointing it at him. You have this skateboard. And for everybody out there, can we please put this to rest? Hold a skateboard in your hand and tell me that you cannot hit somebody in the back of the head with a skateboard and 100% knock them out, do brain damage, or kill them. 1,000%. You can 100% do it's hard. all of that. I mean, it, so anybody, yeah. you, there's videos out there of skateboarders that have gotten in fights and they they drop people and knock them unconscious. And so, no doubt. Like the whole argument is like, oh, it's a skateboard. Like hearing that makes me like, Kind of infuriated that it shows no, ridiculous. more so that like people care more about their truth than the truth. And the truth yeah. is you getting hit in the back of the head. If somebody's charging you with a skateboard, they could hit you one time in the head and knock you out. And to be honest, that's that's fear enough in fear enough in itself of I am fearing for my life because if they knock me out and now I'm unconscious, there is no way they could stomp my head in. So that was enough. And watching that video, it almost became after the Rosenbaum moment, which was blurry that everything else stemmed up that, that formed after that was just like pouring on and, you know, treating him yeah. like an active shooter. Could they have? Yeah. If that's it. Yeah. If that, that's what they think. And, and the argument is made like, they're not here to tell you their side of the story anymore because they're dead. Yeah. So, you know, that's not fair to them either, but I, we're going to get, we're going to get to that as far as yeah. intent. Right. And, and again, staying under the umbrella of opportunist, mm -hmm. because if you've only listened up to this point, and you're a uh, anti Rittenhouse. You're probably like, go Derek, go Cody, because we were talking crap about Rittenhouse for the last 15 minutes. As far as he shouldn't have been there with this AR-15. Before you agree with us, before you start championing us, hear the other side. But you I, may I not will like say this. this. You I may will, not like us. I will say this. After this one is that at what point do we decide that? burning businesses to the ground isn't okay people well, don't that's want, that's where i'm going people don't want the police to get involved because now the police yeah. are told they have to stand down the rioting happens the looting happens the fires are burning places of business are burning so like what, what what's the answer but we'll get we'll go into it because well, i'm not fully you know that that written house was there in the first place am i totally against i don't know because if it was my business and people were like Listen, I'm not going to allow people to burn it down. If I had a business, I'd be like, okay. Well, you can be you can be against Rittenhouse going there, but understand why he went. Right. That, I, that may be confused. Like, you right. know what I mean? Like, totally. And that's why I want to get into this other side. It's like, yeah. I hate the I, the fact that he went there. Even Rittenhouse has said he's in hindsight, he wishes he didn't go. Right. But I, I hate the fact that he went there, but I understand why he did. Right. You know, in, to some degree. Now, what his intent was when he's fully, when he went there. None of us know. The right. only person who knows is Rittenhouse. Did he go there with the intent on killing someone? Or was it like, I'm going to protect these property. And if someone, if this property, and if someone crosses me, I'm blowing a hole in them. Because my like, problem he is was looking this, for right? It. Like, say, say you're there with the AR and you're protecting a business and somebody from distance whips a Malik off your way and it hits in. Like, wh where's the line? Like, how does there that is person no, know? There's like, no oh, line, now but I'm going to shoot. It's like, but here's the thing. You've been in you've been in fights before. I don't think I'm putting anything out there. Yeah. We have all seen it where there are guys who are the nicest guys in the world, go out to a party or something like that, and they're bad dudes, like they can fight, and they're not looking for problems, but somebody finds them and then they handle it. And before you know it, they're knocking someone out. Mm -hmm. But you and I also know guys mm -hmm. who go to parties, go to clubs looking for a problem. Yeah. They're looking for the dude to step on their shoe. They're right. looking for the person to look at their girl the wrong way. And as soon right. as they do, they're reacting. Right. My opinion does. And again, that's why I'm always making sure I qualify that Cody and I are two different people. We may feel differently. I feel like R Rittenhouse went there to protect property, but also hoping someone would try him. Yeah. Okay. That's what I feel. Yeah. That's my heart. That's what I feel. That said, let's change gears for a second because we talked about opportunists and the idea that maybe Rittenhouse went there with viewing this as an opportunity 
to do something that he's been angry about for a while and he this was an, a way to do it and get and be covered by the law, mm-hmm. right? Let's talk about the other side to it because you just hit on it. Yeah. These protests, they were about Jacob Blake and as far as him being shot multiple times by police. There, by the way, there were news reports out there and celebrities out there saying that the police killed Jacob ba- Blake. Jacob Blake's alive. Mm-hmm. But that's paralyzed. That's a whole different that's a whole different conversation for a different day that these celebrities who have millions of followers. I do want to touch saying, on that at the end of this cuz it's absolutely, yeah, disgusting. absolutely. You have these people out there protesting in regards to Jacob Blake. I have no problem with it. That's what our country's about. Mm-hmm. Protesting, yep. voting, speaking your truth, going out there and trying to elicit change by in mass numbers. Mm-hmm. All for it. Yeah. However, when it comes to Joseph Rosenbaum, I want to make sure I get their names right, Anthony Huber, and Gage Groskowitz, I'm not even going to say his last name right, do I think those three individuals were there for Jacob Blake? No, I do not. I do not believe that for a second. Mind you, all three of these individuals, I'm going to read it to you, convicted felons, Mm -hmm. okay? Rosenbaum, convicted, he's a sex offender, level three, okay? Failure to maintain registration status, which means he's an active uh, registered sex offender, but he's failing to report where he's living so the police can't track him, okay? Anthony Huber, convicted felon, assault and battery, domestic abuse, false imprisonment, and possession of a legal weapon. And then Gage, who is still alive but was shot, uh, felony burglary, probation violations, and possessions of illegal weapons. So let let me just stop it right there. Let me (laughs) stop it right there. (laughs) Okay. You uh, Say you're... An outside perspective, you are, maybe you're somebody that is, you've tuned everything out. You haven't heard anything. You know nothing about this case. You hear that and you hear that those three individuals were out past a curfew the same way we were hearing that Rittenhouse was out past a curfew. You hear those three individuals are out past a curfew. What do you think those three individuals are looking to get into? They're looking to cause problems. There's no doubt about it. They're there for the peaceful protests? No, no, they're 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 there for social justice? I don't think they give a damn. They're there the to Black make sure Lives that Matter the system movement. is benefiting, like that the system isn't, um, you know, bringing people down and benefiting another group of people. That's what they're there for. No, nah. come on, not buying it. Come on, not come on, it. media. I'm gonna call out the media come. on this. It's like, come on, man. <laughs> well, and by the way, we're not saying. I think I can speak for you here. We're not saying that even though they. Well, I'll speak for myself because this is controversial, but I've said it on my my uh, other podcast. Do I give a shit that Rosenbaum's dead? No, I don't. He's a child molester. I don't care. I'm, that's just me. But do I think that because of what they did, they should be dead? Mm, no, I don't think you can justify oh, that's like, conversation that's not for the, a different day. Yeah, th- that's not the way it works. But honestly, I'm not crying any tears over it. That's me. Uh, I have no use for him as a father. You know, I, I don't even want to go there. What I would do now, if it was now, I just want to also say for, for anybody out there that's looking for the issue, we're not saying that anybody that has a past deserves to die. Ultimately, if they die, it's like, oh, they deserved it. Like, you know. Not saying yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not not saying that. And I'm not saying this justifies what happened to them. What we're saying is these individuals are not our opportunists. They went there under the, the disguise that they were there for a, a, a just reason, mm-hmm. right? To go protest something they disagreed with. But their intentions were, this is my opinion, to go there and cause violence, burn buildings, uh, assault people, fight. And it's clear as day from the videos. Mm-hmm. They didn't care about Jacob. Rosenbaum they was going confrontational there from the start. From the start. And they well, were looking from for what problems. we've seen. I, I can't from, I don't know the proper terminology, but there's plenty well, of from what we've seen, but there. I don't think I don't think Rosenbaum was an upstanding citizen looking to you know, and it was a social justice warrior. I don't think he was. I think he saw this as an opportunity where these guys are morons, they're scumbags, and they're going there because life has not gone well for them, and it's an opportunity. For them to carry out an underlying agenda that they have because they don't like the world they live in, so they're going to burn it to the ground for everybody else. Mm-hmm. So that all said, they were, as you mentioned a few minutes ago, were out past curfew mm-hmm. as well. And you could make an argument, and I think it's a fair argument, that if it was just peaceful protesters marching in the streets, mm-hmm. protesting at government buildings, whatever they want to do, you can't justify Rittenhouse and his crew going out there doing what they're doing because at that point, if they do, they're in the wrong. Mm-hmm. You could say that Rittenhouse and his crew being out there was an was a reaction to an action by the rioters. Kind of the whole, mm-hmm. you know, two wrongs don't make a right type thing where if there's no buildings being burned down, 
There's no reason for these people to go there with AR-15s. Yeah. Now, I hear you if you say they would have gone either way. It's very possible. And that's why I'm saying whether you're right-leaning or left-leaning, I feel the overall theme here is opportunist. Mm -hmm. We're on both sides who are using these causes to go and carry out things that they want to do. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is people like Rosenbaum and his crew going there to burn things down just because they hate the world they live in. Yeah. And people like Rittenhouse and the and and the in these groups that wanna, you know, these these types of militias almost yeah. that want to go out there and want civil unrest mm -hmm. because then they can they have an, a reason to go out there with these firearms and basically serve as a, a military organization, even though they don't usually have the training for yeah. it. So I think Creating it's just like a, a lawlessness. Yeah. It's creating Can't have lawlessness. It, can't have it either set. And I think that's what we're trying to say, right? 100%. Like either way, we can't have this. We can't have it. Absolutely. We, we can't have, we, you can't, if you are on the side that is, is viewing it like, well, there's no right way to protest. Okay. So then there's, then you're, everybody is essentially okay with, with buildings being burned to the ground, property being destroyed, c products being stolen. You're okay with that, but then you're not okay with the people's that with people going down there to protect the businesses locally. Now there's another thing that was put out there. And what I want people to understand about how far Rittenhouse was, he's not from Kenosha, but he's got family in Kenosha. He's got friends in Kenosha. So the articles and the media covers that was saying he just crossed state lines with a gun. One, that was false. Two, his he's, mom brought him there with the yeah, gun. His girlfriend's, um, his sister's boyfriend is the one who bought the gun who lives there. And his mom, it's like a 20 mile difference where his mom is over the border. That's like me driving over the border into like right past Trenton, which is like not that far for me. You know what I mean? So it's not like, oh, I drove like across state lines and went that far. It's like his family was there. So he went to where his family had business owners that they knew. And so this wasn't like just some guy driving across country. Like there are militias out there that do this. That is not, that is not good. Um, mm -hmm. they like come across where they're looking for violence. You can tell they're different yes. names. You were talking about yes. like the proud boys. They're looking for yep. violence. Like these guys looking are coming for problems for destruction. Antifa. Absolutely. They're coming for destruction for sure. Right. And so the thing about Kyle is like, at what point you see all these, you see these buildings burning, you see businesses burning. And then it's like, okay, you don't want the cops because you want the, you want to defund the police. You don't want the police doing their job because now they're past curfew. They're burning buildings. I mean, Derek, I don't know. I was never a cop. Isn't that justifiable to arrest people? Yeah. It's an arson. It's a felony. Right. So now 100%. you have, which, cause you're seeing this, you're seeing, you know, and you're not getting a crazy amount of media coverage on it. You're seeing buildings burn. You're hearing about it. And you're like, is anybody going to do anything? Mm -hmm. And that's well, what Wisconsin, causes... that's a whole other issue where they don't want police there. And yeah. so that's a whole nother show we can do. Yeah. So it's like, do you, where, where, where do we draw the line here? You know, where do we draw the line? Cause this isn't it. I, I, I like to think that most people are like you and I, I think the majority of the country is like mm -hmm. you and I, where we don't want to see racism. We don't want to see police brutality. Right. We don't want to see anybody in a position of authority taking advantage of anybody. Right. White, black, brown, purple, blue, green. Yeah. I don't like it. I've said out publicly, totally. there are bad cops out there and we got to get them out of there. So, and I think that when there is an injustice, it's important if you want things to change to voice your opinion and do it collectively as a group, because there is power in numbers mm -hmm. and I will stand by your side mm -hmm. and I, I've done it. I've done it. So I, I mean, I've gone and done press releases again, you know, actual press conferences against police officers yeah. and, and their departments. So don't, you know, you can, you can go look at the history. However, I think most people that are normal people just trying to live in this crazy world are against arson, mm -hmm. are against looting, are against violence, are against destruction of property mm -hmm. simply to get your message heard. I don't think most people think that the video showing individuals running into high-end um, stores stealing purses and sneakers are doing that um, in the name of these people who have been wronged by police. I don't think they're doing it in the name of George Floyd. I don't believe that. On the other hand, I also don't believe that people like Kyle Rittenhouse and these, you know, these militias, these groups that are going out there with their AR-15s and their military suits on are going out there solely because they're answering the call for service and they're patriots and they're mm -hmm. doing it right. simply because it's the right thing to do. They've been wanting to do this for years yeah. since the beginning of time. They're just seeing these situations as opportunities mm -hmm. to not hide themselves, to go out there and carry their AR-15s in public and 
intimidate those protesters, intimidate those rioters so that they don't do it anymore because they don't agree with whatever they're protesting about. So if the protests are kept amicable and amicable and civil, there's no justification for those guys with guns to be there. And I'm hope I'm hopeful that we get to a point where we're back in our worlds where and maybe I'm naive, but you and I are here talking about how when something is viewed as wrong, whether you agree with it or not, people can have a disagreement or a discourse and be able to go out there and protest publicly or vote for different people so that we we create change mm -hmm. but without destroying people or assaulting people. Yeah. That's the point that I hope we're making mm -hmm. here is like you cannot you can agree with the verdict and not agree with the situation. Yeah. And I hope that we can see what's going on here. There's something deeper going on here where two sides are using causes mm -hmm to hide their true agendas. Yeah. That's what's going on here. Yeah. And that's who these people are in these, in these yeah. cases that we're hearing about. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree with you. And I think that the, the, the biggest problem is the coverage of this <laughs> because you have one side screaming white supremacy and he's a racist. You have another side saying that he's a hero and yeah. is, you know, standing up for what he believes in. And at the end of the day, like they're both kind of, not right like they're both wrong 100%. they're both not right you know so 100%. it's like he's a hero in what sense like he went yeah. and ended up having to kill two people because of self-defense and and you see the coverage of that and it's like it it's like well why does that make him a hero like okay and we've yeah seen, and by the way we've seen people kind of making these three guys heroes as well where they're not heroes but like victims and pray for them and they, oh what I I can't what even, are we talking about? I can't here? even get into it. But there's 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 that drives me absolutely insane. So we're gonna so it's almost like we've become a society where if a criminal is is on a side of I guess an agenda that is working for that it, that benefits that one side of the agenda, even though he's a horrible criminal, like this guy Rosenbaum is a low life piece of shit. Yeah, he's a pedophile. But he's on the side of look. I'm, I'm looking for social justice. I mean, they I don't were even using know. him. They're using him, and then to, people to, to are pushing like, agenda. "Oh, rest in peace. You're the real hero." It's like, what? This is a child right. molester. Are we? Are we as a society going bonkers? Right. Like, yeah. I, I understand. You don't agree if because there are there's a, there's a side of the aisle that I totally understand that they don't they don't want the guns in the street. They don't even believe in in Co the right correct. to own guns. That's all. Second Amendment conversation that you and I could go a whole nother route about. Yep. But why are we dropping that into and then making light like this guy Rosenbaum wasn't a piece of shit? This guy's a low life. Mm -hmm. Agreed. This They're using it. You nailed it. They're pushing an agenda. They're anti gun. They're anti right. They don't want rifles on the street. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, look, it, here's another maniac with mm -hmm. a rifle. And, you know, we're going to see what happens. You know, Rose, uh, Rittenhouse, whether you like him or hate him. He's going to sue the pants off of everybody. everybody. And frankly, and, well, I he's going to win. Right. He's going to win. You know, I think it's, uh, we're saying the same thing. There's people with agendas. They're pushing certain narratives. If you don't have anything else to say, I'd like to end it on this note. Are you, you good? No, I just wanted to talk about the one situation that I saw. It was on The View. I was watching Joy Behar. Hit it. Hit it. And Hit it. Um, it was just like, like people shouldn't feel nervous to go and protest. And I think that's what the media was also trying to do. They're trying to make it a thing about now people are going to be scared to protest because there's going to be white supremacists that come to kill them. That's no, not that, the yeah, case. They, no, if you're, if you're burning buildings down and you're rioting and you're, and you're assaulting people, assaulting police officers, there is a possibility that these militia groups are going to come on down and there could be a problem. And, 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 and I'm not, not saying it's justified. Yeah. I'm not saying it's warranted, but that's how they're going to view it. So I think that there, I don't think, first and foremost, no one should be afraid to go out and protest. Right. And if this was a situation where there were protesters marching in the streets and Kyle Rittenhouse was on the sidewalk firing into the protest as they were walking by, you and I would not be having this conversation. Oh, we'd be, so, I, I just was a little disgusted because I watched the thing on Joy Behar and I was like, really? And she, she just was you know, like, she's just spewing out incorrect like facts. It's. You know, well, she she's talks one, about a she's guy. also they all been saying that he they came over state lines with the gun. He yeah, came over state she's lines. She's out with here gun. saying that like he came over with his mom in the car. Like his mom wasn't even there. His mom was working. All this stuff has been proven to be incorrect. This is why this kid Kyle Rittenhouse is probably going to go after. He he should everybody. go after everybody. He's gonna his his because his life is now never going to be the same. 
on his own doing. He went there on his own merit. And he that was his he choice. Never done it, but he yep. didn't ask for the scrutiny and be called a white supremacist. Like, listen, no. I will say this, and, and it's like when you blanket, when you blanket everybody under white supremacy just because they're white, you hide the actual white supremacist. Yeah. Like, would they yeah. just look at you and me? Because I guess we, and our opinion here may not be the same as a lot of other people. They'll say, "Are white? Like, we don't understand it. We're white privilege. We're white supremacist." And you're just blanketing us who are good people in the same category as low life pieces of shit, actual white supremacists yeah. who are scumbags. That's where yeah. this whole thing is losing me. Cause I'm just like, you're categorizing all of us together. And it's like, you're hiding these scumbags that are actually white supremacists that are going to be out there doing or mess, doing yep. messed up stuff. Yep. And it's, it's, it's and, and again, we're, we're not saying we feel bad for written house or whatever. He made a choice. And I said it right at the top of the show. I I don't. I don't think he should. Mm-hmm. I don't think he should have been there. I also don't think a lot of the guys on the other end should have been there either. But you know, you just talked about um, you know this top the media, and maybe you guys don't agree with this, but this is a nice way to end it because it kind of all ties it together. Okay, we've been saying to you that there's opportunists out there. Not only the opportunists that show up at these protests, not only the opportunists that go there with with guns and and describe themselves as patriots, but also people in the media. Mm-hmm. Both sides of it, celebrities, mm-hmm. football players, basketball players, baseball, all these people, you know, reality TV stars, they all have these opinions. They're retweeting things. Mm-hmm. They're all talking about stuff. And I, I encourage you to go out there and look at how many people were tweeting about Rittenhouse when this all went down and how much of a travesty it was. And basically they disguise it as they just them, them just wanting the world to be a safer, better place. But then you have something like what just happened in Wisconsin during the parade, which we're going to cover in another video. This is going to be our next and video, I've, guys. Yeah. And I and I've gone and looked and those people are completely silent. And when I thought that they were being just good hearted people trying to make change, that silence tells me one and one thing only that in reality, they're full of shit and they have an agenda like most people. Couldn't agree because with if they more, really no. felt that way, they'd be tweeting and talking just as much about what happened in Wisconsin as they were about what happened in uh, Wisconsin, but a different part of Wisconsin, but they're not. I agree with you. That's that's where they're, that's where their true colors show through. So I implore you to go do the same thing. Don't take our word for it. Mm -hmm. And I implore you to find people that are willing to sit there in front of you and say, and, and truly mean it. Both sides are wrong. Mm -hmm. Both sides are wrong. Nobody was right here. Those and guys should have been there doing what they were doing, and Rittenhouse shouldn't have been there with a gun. Unfortunately, Rittenhouse had the law on his side, and we could talk about how the law is written to protect certain groups. And again, another another video, but it's one of those things where when you look at this case, based on the way the law is written, Rittenhouse was covered. Rittenhouse mm-hmm. was covered. I don't mm-hmm. know what else to tell you guys. Yeah. But look at the people that you're getting your information from and ask yourself, are they objective? Are they impartial? Do they really want to elicit change? Or are they trying to use the information out there, use the people out there to support whatever narrative they want you to believe? Mm-hmm. That's what you guys need to do on your own. That's great. How's man. that? That's a great send off, bro. I, I couldn't right. agree with you more. It's the truth and you see it all the time. So do it. Don't take our word for it. We could be just like them. You, you have to judge for yourself. Go out there, do your own due diligence and get to the bottom of it and find out who really has you and your family's best interest at heart. And who's just trying to support whatever narrative they want you to believe because it it benefits them in some way. And there's always guys. A way. Listen, we want to say everybody out there, because this is coming out the day after Thanksgiving. Be careful out there, because as I said earlier, the majority of people watching this, watching the news, are good people. They just want everyone to be safe and happy, and they want our, us as a society to move in the right direction and become better. Because we're not there, mm-hmm. and we're always going to be improving. But at the end of the day, the way people are carrying out what they're doing now when they don't agree with something on both sides, Mm -hmm. they're wrong. 100%. I hope you have a safe holiday. Take care. Keep your mind on a head. You know, let me do that again. Keep your head on a swivel. Be aware of what's around you. And we hope the best for you and your family. We'll see you on the next episode, guys. Appreciate you joining us here on the Winner Circle. Take care. (laughs) 